Can you hear me now? Okay, Ms. I can. Thank you. All right. All right. So uh, we're here today for an evidentiary hearing on Mr. Cook's uh, complaints that he's being denied parenting time. I know from prior hearings that he's not been getting his parenting time. And uh, so what I mainly uh, want to hear today are the reasons for why he's not getting his parenting time. Uh, so uh, since uh, Ms. Spar, you're the one that would have the burden of proof on those reasons, uh, I will hear from you and your witnesses first. Uh, let's be clear on the ground rules. Um, I, uh, I know from past hearings with the two of you that you both have trouble waiting your turn to speak. Uh, I want this to go forward in an orderly fashion. Uh, I, I don't handle interruptions well. Uh, and if you want me to hear all that you have to say, it's better for you to wait until it's your turn. Uh, if I re reach the end of my endurance with shutting either one of you up when you shouldn't be talking, there's a decent chance I'll just throw you out of the hearing and we'll go on without you. So if, if you've got a piece of paper handy and a pen, what you might want to do is every time you hear something that you are going to want to address when it's your turn, just make a note of it. I promise you, as long as you follow the rules, I will give you both a chance to say whatever it is you want me to hear so that I've got the full picture before I make a decision. Um, I, I plan to utilize the mute key uh, if you're speaking out of turn. <clears throat> uh, I hope, hope that will help, uh, but uh, each of you should keep in mind that your goal today is that I grant you whatever relief it is that you're asking. And the best way for that to happen is if you're able to convince me through testimony of yourself and witnesses that that's what I should do. But if you're not gonna follow the rules, there's a good chance I won't hear everything that you wanna tell me. So with that, we'll start with Ms. Spar. Uh, Ms. Spar, who would you like to call first as a witness? Well, um, I subpoenaed Carl's mother, but um apparently she's not going to be testifying this morning i don't know why but i have my daughter isabel and she um would also like to write down some things after her dad talks so that she can comment on them um and it, I would well here's like to here's that. how that works here's how that would work uh since i'll be hearing from your witnesses first uh and then from Mr. Cook and any witnesses that he might have, if you or any of your witnesses have uh, testimony that you want to enter in rebuttal to anything that Mr. Cook's witnesses say, you'll okay. get a chance. But okay. again, we'll do we'll do that in order. Uh, so, which witness okay. would you like me to hear from first? Um, I, Isabel is, is right here. If, if she can tell you what's been going on and what happened <clears throat> today. Go ahead, That's fine. Put her, put her in front of the camera. That's okay. Uh, good morning, Isabel. Morning. Um, I just want to say right. thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Um, All right, really before we before we go ahead, I've got to put you under oath. Okay. Uh, would you raise your right hand, please? Uh, you do swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right, state your full name. You can put your hand down now. Isabel Olympias Bar. All right, and Isabel, how old are you? I'm 15. Uh, where do you go to school? Um, I'm homeschooled, Michigan Great Lake Virtual Academy. Is that because of COVID or you've been doing that even before COVID? I've 
I've been doing homeschooling for about three years. Yeah, what grade are you in? Ninth. Okay, so uh, uh, Isabel, uh, I want to make sure you understand. I know you've you've made an oath to tell the truth, but I make I want to make sure you understand. It's very very important uh, that what I hear is the truth. I uh, uh, make decisions based on the testimony that I hear in the courtroom, and if testimony that I hear is untruthful. Uh, there's a risk that I might make the wrong decision. And I don't have a lie detector machine. Uh, I have to do my best job of judging credibility based upon how a witness presents himself or herself. But it's very, very important that you tell me only the truth today. You understand that? Yes. All right, so uh, I know you live with your mother. Uh, and that Mr. Cook is your father. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I also know that you uh, have not been regularly going to parenting time with your father. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, when, when was the last time you went for a, a parenting time visit with your father? Um... The last time that I stayed the night was probably like six or seven months ago, but the last time I went with him was September 25th. Okay, you said six or seven months ago, the last time you spent the night. Um, yeah. uh, was that before COVID restrictions were in place or after COVID? It was before COVID. Okay. And uh, I, I want to hear, and I know there were some uh, uh, things that happened, or at least it's been alleged that things happened at this last time that you saw your father. But I want to ask you first about this visit six or seven months ago. Tell me how that went. Um. Well, we didn't actually see him he had to work and so we were at our cousin's house that weekend how did you get to your cousin's house um he drove us there uh your father drove you there yes so he picked up you at your mother's house yeah uh you and was your sister there as well yes yeah, she was and what's her name Chloe Rose Cook. Chloe, okay. Uh, and how old is Chloe? She will be nine in June. All right, so uh, your father came and picked the two of you up and then drove you to his, to your cousin's house? Yeah. Um, and uh, what's your cousin's name? Um, I have three cousins, um, Brock, Harper, and Callie. All right, and I'm assuming there was an aunt or an uncle there too as well? Yes, my aunt and my uncle. Aunt and uncle, and um, which one of your aunt or uncle is your father's sibling? Um, Daniel, my uncle. Okay, Uncle Daniel, okay. Um, <clears throat> and you didn't see your father again until he took you back to your mother's house? Um, yes. Uh, did anything unusual happen during that visit? Mm, no, not really. Uh, did you enjoy the time at your Uncle Daniel's home? Um, it was okay. It wasn't horrible. So, uh, uh, up until that, uh, last overnight visit, how often had you been seeing your father? Um, every other weekend. 
every other weekend for the last year up until the last year I wasn't going. Okay. Uh, just generally for that last year during which you spent the every other weekend, uh, you and your sister Chloe would go together? Um, yeah. And uh, are you able to say how many of those visits you actually stayed at your father's house or at your uncle's house? Um, well, most of the time we were at his house. Um, sometimes we would stay, we stayed at my grandma's house once or twice. And then I stayed at my, um, my aunt uncle's house. But most of the time we were at his house. Uh, tell me about the visits at your dad's house. Uh, how did those go generally? Um, they were always really stressful because it wasn't like it. I wasn't very comfortable there. What, what was it that made it stressful or uncomfortable? He would always get like, always try and start arguments. And so if I didn't agree with him or if I didn't, um, you know, do what he wanted me to do, he would just start screaming at me and yelling mm -hmm. and telling me how much I was like my mom and that, you know, how much he hates her. And so, I mean, it was never, he never enjoyed it. All right, now tell me about this most recent uh, time that you saw your dad. Tell me again when it was. Um, September 25th. All right, so what happened on September 25th? Well, before we get into that, let me, let me back up. So I understand that between the last overnight visit that you actually spent at your uncle's house and September 25th, you didn't uh have any visits with your dad but you did see him occasionally um yes and how would you see him usually when he would go to pick up chloe he's talking from covid till now oh, COVID oh no hey 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 uh, miss Barr, you cannot talk to this witness while i'm talking to her do not do that again sorry okay so let's back up again. So uh, from the time you last spent an overnight with your dad and September 25th, were there times that Chloe went on visits by herself? No. All right, so help me understand how was it Chloe was seeing your father during that time period? Wait, hold on. Are you talking about seeing him through COVID? Because I think I misunderstood what you said. Chloe wasn't being picked up with him during COVID. He would just stop by the house. That's what I'm trying to ask you about, but I was trying to avoid prompting you. I wanted it to be based on your memory, not mine, okay? Okay. So, so tell me again. From the, la from the time until you last okay. spent an overnight, and that was also the last time Chloe spent an overnight, correct? Correct. Until September 25th, there were still times that Chloe saw her father, not spent time with him, but saw him. Is that right? Yes. And how did that happen? Um, he would come on the porch and um, he would talk to Chloe through the window. Through the window. <clears throat> um, how often did he come? Um, sometimes he would come like twice a day and then other times, you know, we wouldn't see him for weeks. Uh, how would you know that he was there? Um, he makes himself very known. If he, he'll just come unannounced and start banging on the door and like, you know, wanting to come yeah, with him. Door. That's what you do. All right, Mr. Cook, I'm going to mute your microphone. 
Uh, so he would come to the door, he would bang on the door. Uh, did, did you on any of those times ever go to the door and talk to him? No. Why not? Um, uh, me and my, my father had gotten into a fight um, and then he invaded my privacy and I was really upset for a while and I didn't talk to him. Um, when, when did you and your father get in a fight? Um, I think it was in February and I was on vacation with a family friend and he had tried to call um, and I hadn't seen that he had called and for some reason my phone was answering for me and so I was talking and I went over to take my phone to go shower and the phone was on and it had been on for five minutes. And there was nobody, I wasn't talking to him. It was, he was just listening to whatever conversation I was having. And um, I felt that, that was very, that was invading my privacy and shouldn't have happened. So this happened before or after your last overnight? Um, that was after. Okay. So... You were upset at him that he was listening to you. Did you make it known to him that you were upset with him? Um, I didn't even get the chance because after I had hung up, I got really nervous and I got scared. And so I called my mom and I was like, hey, mom, dad was listening to my conversation. And I, he texted me something and it was a really long, mean message about him how, you know, horrible my mom is and how I'm just like her and how, you know, she's just this big liar and that he doesn't know why he expects anything else from me. And it really made me feel just so horrible, you know, having my father say something like that to me and having it as like it was nothing to him and that I was nothing to him. So after this incident where he had called your phone phone you're saying he sent you a long text message uh, relating the things that you just described to me yes okay so let's let's uh, go back to these uh, screen door visits so when he would come to the door uh, he wouldn't come inside the house um no but one time he did open the door um, and when your sister would go to the door to talk to him uh, uh, through the door, were, were you able to hear the conversation? Yeah, you, yeah, because of him being outside and you could usually hear him from outside and, you know, inside the house, wherever you were. <clears throat> and how did those conversations go? Um, most of the time it was just you know them talking and then other times it would be um like him asking Chloe questions um one time we had she got he got there and he started you know as soon as Chloe got to the window was um asking her all these questions you know saying um I hope your mom didn't be as be stupid and take you to Chicago and like yelling at you know intimidating Chloe and Chloe was just like me and my mom were sitting there and she's like I don't know what to do and he's like yelling at her and saying um that that would be stupid of her to do that and so whenever he would try and talk to Chloe he would just try and like ask her questions about you know what we were doing and that happens a lot Okay, let's skip forward then to September 25th. I want you to tell me from the start to the end of everything that happened that day around your dad's visit. Okay, so when he had come to pick us up, I had gotten all my stuff ready and I had taken it out to the car. And my grandma was the one that was, was helping me put my stuff in the car and she said, yeah, your dad wasn't expecting you. 
and I was confused because I was like, we've already told him that I was coming. He confirmed it. He said, okay, you know, and when I walked out there, I looked at him and he just like, you know, glanced at me, like didn't even try and, you know, he didn't say hi to me. He wasn't like, um, he was happy to see me. He was just angry at the most disgusting um, face that I've ever seen. I was a little, I was like really scared to get in the car because I didn't know what he was going to do. And he looks really angry. Um, and so, um, so, so yeah. what, what, let me, let me stop you. Uh, did he, uh, say something to make you understand why he was angry? He didn't say anything like that to me. I, he didn't say that, you know, I did anything, anything like that. He just looked really angry when we, when I first got to the car and so after I got Chloe buckled in her seat, I sat down and he said, so you're not allowed to talk? And I was like, I, I don't know what I'm trying. And he was like, um, so how are you? And I was like, um, I'm okay. And then he was like, well, that's good because you're not staying with me tonight. You're going to Granny's house for the night. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not leaving Chloe. And he was like, yes, you are. I'm the father. You're going to do what I say. And I kept yelling at him, saying I'm not going to leave her. And he started screaming at me and, you know, getting really angry while he was screaming at me. His face got all red. And um, he kept telling me that he was, that I was going to go to my grandma's house and that I wasn't staying with him for the night. And I was like, I don't. I'm not going to leave my sister with you. And um, he looked so angry. I was like shaking. I was so scared. I didn't really know what to do. I just knew that I couldn't leave Chloe. And when when Chloe said, uh, when he said that Chloe looked over at me with the most scared look I've ever seen on her face, she looked at me and she said, don't leave me with him don't let me go and she held my hand the whole way in the car and while I was yelling at him he had like made a fist he didn't swing at me but I had looked down and seen his hand and he moved his hand like he was going to and I flinched like that and then he stopped and then his mom started yelling to him to stop yelling and to stop screaming because she wasn't going to take, she couldn't take it. So let me ask you, uh, why was it that you were insisting on staying with Chloe? Because there are, there are numerous things that he's done that just put Chloe in danger. And, you know, he doesn't watch her. He's not safe with her. And she's so little. He doesn't watch her. I, you know, I have to be there to make sure that she is safe because every time I'm not there, something happens and we're like, okay, the one time I'm not there, you leave her at a stranger's house with a whole bunch of people you don't know just because her aunt is there. Okay. That doesn't mean we did with them. I mean, in a pool that's too deep for them that she said, she had a hard time swimming in and um, that when she was there, a little boy pulled his pants down and showed all the girls his genitalia. But that was, per I mean, nobody said anything about that. Let me, let me stop you. You're telling me things that Chloe has told you? Yeah. Chloe's a very honest little girl. She would never have lied about something like that. All right, but th those aren't things that you actually saw yourself, right? Not personally, no. All right, well, let me ask you, uh, has uh, Chloe ever shown any fear of her father? Yeah, yes, 100% she has. When? Um, like when we were in the car, she looked over at me. And she said, don't leave me. Don't leave me with him. And so on the, on the 25th of September, she did that. Yes. 
Be before then, back when you were having visits, had Chloe shown any fear of her father? Yeah, she's always been scared of him. Whenever I'm at his house, you know, he'll start yelling at her and immediately go to me and get, and she keeps telling him that, telling me how scared she is, you know, stay with me. Okay, let's go back to, to the 25th now. So you're in the car. Uh, you're insisting on staying with Chloe. Uh, what what happened next? Um, after we had gotten to his house, after yelling at me the whole way there and screaming at me, um, we had gotten to his house and I went to go take my stuff out of the house and um, he kept you know, screaming at me, saying that he didn't want to see me and that he was sick of seeing my face. And his mom got out of the car and was like, Carl, just, it's fine. Just let her stay, let her stay. And he kept saying, no, I'm not going to let her stay. I can't stand to look at her any longer. And, um, and so it was, I didn't, I had Chloe on my hip the whole time, but I, and so when I went to go put my stuff on the porch to go inside, he didn't let me inside. He said that he had to clean up the house and to get my room ready because there was stuff in it, apparently. And so he said that we were going to be going to Grammy's for an hour and that we were going to come back to his house. But halfway to my grandma's house, he had called and said that he didn't want to see my face anymore and that he couldn't stand to look at me. And so she said, and so I said to her, can you please just take us home? Um, and, you know, you can, we have, um, a, we called the police and there's, uh, you can ask the cops if you don't believe me. We have multiple people that have seen it. I, I just want to know what you saw. So let's back up a little. I have so a, you ended up you ended up going to your grandma's house. No, we didn't get there. You, oh, well, I I misunderstood oh. you then. You, I thought you were with your grandma and asked her to take you home. Is that not yeah. what you said? No, we were with her, but we hadn't gotten to her house yet. But when I was there, he kept yelling at me. <laughs> face and saying that if I didn't leave with my grandmother, he was going to call the cops on me. I see. So, so, uh, uh, you left his house with Chloe and your grandma? Yes. And when you say your grandma, do you mean your dad, your dad's mother? Yes. Okay. So I think I've got the picture. Uh, uh, after you arrived at his house, uh, you, your grandmother, and Chloe then were driving to her house, and you asked her to take you home. Yes, I asked her to take us home because he had called you, on the way to I, his house, her house, and asked and said, I don't want to see her face anymore. I can't stand to look at it anymore. Just take her home. I don't want to see her. And so we drove, drove back to his house to grab my stuff. And while we were driving back to his house, um, Chloe was just freaking out. She's so scared. And she said, she was holding my hand so tight the whole way home. And when we got in there, I go to grab my stuff. And he was just, you know, yelling at me the whole, you know, saying stuff to me. And when I, gotten in the car he said um some he said you know when I first heard that your sister was moving to Chicago I couldn't believe it she was moving to the most dangerous city in the world and then he looked at me and said but you know what I don't care go to Chicago and I was like oh so you're saying go to the most dangerous city in the world you don't care but <laughs> so let me stop you because you you lost me um what sister is that that was moving to chicago 
Um, she's my older sister. I see. And so I'm, uh, I'm still a little confused. You were, you stopped at your dad's house. He got out and stayed there. You left your things on the porch and then you, Chloe, and your grandmother were on your way to her house uh, uh, when this phone call came through that you've already described. So you turned around and went back to your dad's house? Yes. So you could get your things? Yeah. All right, and then you spoke to your dad again when you got back to his house, is that right? Yes. All right, I wanna make sure I've got this clear. And what? how did that conversation go? Um, well, I grabbed my stuff and I started heading to the porch. I mean, to the car. And he had offered to take my stuff to the car. He kind of didn't offer, he just kind of took it from me and then took it to the car. And I was just like, oh, okay. And so I'm getting buckled up and, you know, he's still yelling at me, telling me stuff. And he said, he looked over at me and said, um, I couldn't believe your sister was moving to the most dangerous city in the world. And then looking at me straight in the eye, said, you know what, I don't care. Go to the most dangerous city in the world. Go to Chicago. She's like, oh, okay. And he, you know, went on to the other side of the car um, to, you know, hug Chloe. And, you know, he kept yelling at me in my face as he's, you know, on the other side of the car. And he asked me, he said, so just to be clear, why are we mad at dad? And I was like, and why can't we leave Chloe with me? And I also have other stuff I'd like to tell you, but just to stick with the story, he, I said, well, number one, I don't know what you'll do because of other times that Chloe's been with you by herself. You haven't, you know, watched her or anything. You've put her in danger. And he's, he's, that got him so angry. He said, what I'll do? And he started screaming at me and said, I can't believe it. You're so effing stupid, just like your mother. And walked off and slammed the door. And where was Chloe all this time? She was, he was right in Chloe's door. So he was right next to her. And whose, whose vehicle was this? This was my grandma's vehicle. Uh, was she driving it the whole time? Um, yes. All right, and then you left and your grandma took you back to your mother's house? Yes. Is that the last time you saw your dad? Um, no. Um, when did you see him after that? Um, after he had come back um, to pick us up again and we wouldn't go with him. I see. So he he came for another parenting time, what, two weeks later? Um, the next week. The next week, okay. Yeah. And you you refused you refused to go and did Chloe refuse to go? Yeah, Chloe did not want to go. She was inside <clears throat> telling us, you know, she didn't want to go. Please don't make me go. And my mom was like, Chloe, you have to at least go out there and tell him you don't want to go. And um, so Chloe was too scared to, so she had me do it. And I went out there and I was like, you know, I'm not going to go with you. I don't feel comfortable going with you. So I'm not going to, you know, he started getting, um, he started getting very angry and, you know, yelling, saying why I wasn't um, wanting to go with him. And I was like, did you not see what happened last weekend? Did you really think we were going to go with you after that? And so after, um, after like talking to him and him yelling at me, um, he, he just, but he wasn't with my grandma. He was with, I don't know who, um, I'm guessing it was his girlfriend, but he wasn't with my grandma and it wasn't in my grandma's car. It was with somebody else. Did he come back again any time after that? Yeah, he did. He came back um, the next weekend after that. And what ha what happened then? 
um, the same thing, me just telling him that I wasn't going to go um, and him continuing to yell at you, to yell at me. So were you the one to, <clears throat> excuse me, were you the one to tell him every time that Chloe didn't want to go either? Yeah, two weeks after he had come, Chloe um, went onto the porch and yelled from the porch that she didn't want to go and that she was scared of him. Uh, when was the last time that he came to your house? Um, probably about four weeks ago. And did something similar have to happen then? Um, yes. Uh, you told him you didn't want to go and that Chloe didn't want to go. Yes. Okay. Uh, you said there were some other things you wanted to tell me. Uh, now's your chance. Okay. Um, like I said, him not being safe with her and you know, not um, watching her. Well, Chloe had climbed up on the shed roof after me telling him it wasn't safe. I was like, Chloe, I mean, it's like, Dad, that's not a good idea. Chloe is, you know, very wild. Um, it's not a good idea to have her up there. Well, he walked away while I was in the house. I came out and she was on the ground crying. And so I ran over to her and dad had run over to her. And I asked her what happened. She said she'd fallen off of the shed and she'd fallen off of the side of it and kind of like rolled down um, and fell onto a piece of wood that was laying next to the trampoline. <coughs> Um, and she had broke her thumb. No, she had severely sprained her thumb and she had hit her, the back of her tailbone severely hard and it left a huge bruise. And we, but the thing is, is the whole time Chloe's thumb was sprained, I didn't know. I didn't know that her thumb hurt at all because he wasn't letting her tell me the whole time we were at his house for the next day. So we had a wrap on her thumb and I was like, oh, what happened to your thumb? And she was like, I hurt my thumb really bad. And so after she said that dad came in, he was like, oh, she's fine. It's just a little scratch. And I didn't think anything of it. Well, when we got home, I mom looked at, she ran to mom and said, mom, my thumb hurts really bad. And she started crying. And we took the wrap off of her thumb and her thumb was two times larger than it should have been and it was black and blue. And so, you know, we immediately um, took her to the Med Express right down the street from my house and they had said that her thumb was severely sprained. Was there anything else that you wanted to tell yeah. me? Yeah. Um, um, leaving Chloe alone uh, in the store by herself when she was like four. I think. How, yeah, how do you how do you know about that, Chloe? All right, I I want you to only tell me about things that you saw, okay? Okay. Um. Well, when I was probably, I would say nine, he left us in the truck down the street he left his, his truck down the street from our house in the, the, the um, tobacco shop parking lot and went into the phone store to get his phone fixed and it was in the middle of winter we were he left us in the car by ourselves and went into the phone store for probably at least three and a half hours only came to check on us one time and he didn't leave the car on so we were in the car freezing and there was no blankets or anything in there. And um, Chloe was crying, telling me she was so cold, and I didn't, I couldn't have done anything because of him not being there. Um, Great. Um, Isabel, I, I, uh, I really want to focus on things that are recent, not stuff that happened a long time ago. Is there anything else recent that you'd like um, to tell me about? Yeah. So he always says that this is a game, 
but I don't understand how it could be a game when Chloe is screaming crying, yelling at you to stop. She will hold her down and pop each one of her toes as she's screaming and crying to have her to have him stop doing what he's doing. And he does it all the time. Every single time we're over, he always acts like it's a game that he's playing, and it's not. He's actually hurting her. So does she squeal like she's having fun, or does no. she squeal like she's hurting? No, she's she was crying real tears, and he was laughing, saying it was all a joke, and it's not. Not if your child is crying, telling you to stop. Uh, anything else? Um, yes. So, um, prop, there's a lot of times where he will start something with me. I think it was one of the first times that, first or second times I ever went over there. He, we were coloring in his room and we were watching a movie. And he randomly asked me, he was like, so... Have you seen Todd lately? And that's my mom's ex-husband. And I said, and they don't get, get along. Um, I said, no, not recently. And he goes, well, how recent? Like before Bubba, before Bub died? And I was like, no, it hasn't been that long. And I usually don't like talking to him about this because he will start screaming at me and telling me he's my only father um, and that. Todd is nothing to me, and it it's really hard to hear because Todd's always been like a father figure to me. Um, Carl never has been, you know. And so he um he started screaming at me and saying, you know, I'm your only father. God will never be your father. Um and um, it, you know, he, he got up from the bed and he snapped like a pen in half and threw it at the wall. And he stood up and kept rolling his neck around and, you know, puffing out his chest, looking like he was, you know, going to attack me into something. Um, he was really, really angry. It was really terrifying. I was just, you know, crying and had no idea what was going to happen. Um, and was kept saying I wanted to go home and he wouldn't let me. Um, and, uh, he, uh, it, it happens a lot though. I mean, at least every single once a night, he'll just start in and start screaming at me for no reason, or he'll start something to make himself angry. And I'm the kind of person that when I get scared, I don't react, I just freeze up. And so I don't, I don't know what to do when he acts like that. I'm afraid he's really going to hurt us one day. And I don't want to have to wait till we get hurt. I just want it to stop. All right. Uh, Isabel, have you told me about everything important? There's a lot more, but I think just the basic important stuff, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Cook, I'm going to unmute you, or you're going to have to do it, actually. Hold hold on, Isabel. Uh, All right, I did. All right, Mr. Cook, are there, uh, I'm going to give you a chance to testify, uh, but right now, I want to know, are there any other questions you want me to ask Isabel? Uh, just ask her, where, what, if she was so scared and so worried for Chloe's sake, why, where was she two years prior? 
I took her to Yogi Bear's campground two years in a row prior to this year, which got screwed up because of this whole thing. She kept them from me, and I couldn't see All right, hold on. Let me ask you that. So do you remember going to Yogi Bear campground with your dad and Chloe? Um, we runner. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry, Mr. Cook. What did I get? Did I get the question wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Just that she did not go the two years prior. Chloe went with me down to Indiana and to hotel rooms and all sorts of fun activities that she didn't go to for two years. Why all didn't right. she go then? Why wasn't she worried then? I got you. So uh, do you remember a period of time where Chloe went alone to visits and you didn't go? Yeah. Um, when I wasn't going, it wasn't him acting like that wasn't even nearly as bad. I mean, he was still, you know, he still yelled and screamed at her, but it wasn't to the extent that it is now. It wasn't like it is right now. It wasn't that bad. And uh, so your sister was going to these visits alone. Um, why weren't you going to visits? Um, I I had I started going and then I stopped going because I couldn't really I couldn't take it anymore. I was sick of having to be put through that every other weekend because of him because of him being angry and yelling at you yeah just the emotional stress he would put me under i didn't i didn't know how to take it i was scared and so so back then and i don't want to spend a lot of time on this but uh was was his yelling directed to you and not to chloe um it was just to both. It was, you know, whoever he was talking to and whoever made him mad, you know, how it started. But Your in Honor, any event, in, in, in any, hold on, hold, hold on, Mr. Cook, hold yes. on. Uh, um, at least back then, Chloe was not acting afraid to go alone to spend parenting time with her father. Is that fair? She was always scared of him and never wanted to go without me. But she went. But she had to. She wanted to. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Cook, uh, any other questions that you'd uh, like me just, to ask? Is it like, Your Honor, I would just like to state for the record, I didn't yell at the girls. I had no need to yell oh, at the girls. Oh, These oh, girls oh, I, oh, 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 Mr. I, Cook, stop. Stop. Remember the rules I told you about earlier? I, I'm, I if, have if no you, idea what rule I'm breaking right now, no. The rule, the rule you're breaking right now, it is not your turn to testify. I'm just asking you if you have any questions for her. But yes, I Ron, will. I, guess, I will. I guess that's I it, will, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Welcome. Uh, so we may need to hear more from you later. But for now, uh, uh, we're done questioning you. Thank you. So, Ms. Barr, who would you like me to hear from next? I don't get to talk um, at all. My mom is on Zoom. We can go to my mom. And then my, my older daughter is here today. Mm. All right. Well, hold on a minute. I want to address Mr. Cook. He just asked a question. And Mr. Cook, I've told you this over and over again. I'm going to hear from these witnesses first. That's how I do. That's how we do things in court. We don't go back and forth and back and forth. We do things in order. So I'm hearing from these witnesses first. You will get every opportunity to speak, but you have to wait your turn. Okay, Your Honor. Right. How am I supposed to keep up with ten thousand lies from three, four different people? I can't write that down fifty thousand things that are wrong, and then when it's my turn to talk. I'm I'm like trying to put together Mr. a couple Cook. of sentences that are wrong. It's like it's unbelievable. Mr. Someone's going to talk. Mr. Cook. Once again, Mr. I can't Cook. Talk. Okay. Mr. Cook. That's how we do things in court. You never want to do things the correct way. I have to scold you every time you're in front of me to wait your turn. 
I will listen to what you have to say. I promise you. But you got to wait until it's your turn. That's why I told you to make notes of things you want to address later. But we are not going to go back and forth. We have rules and we're going to follow those rules. They're not my rules, but I think they're good ones. So I'm going to mute you again since you have trouble restraining yourself from speaking out. But I will give you a chance to speak when it's your turn. Okay, so uh, you want to call Ms. Uh, Buwanda next? Yes. Okay, Ms. Buwanda, would you please raise your right hand? Uh, you do swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. All right, I need you to state your, your name and spell your last name. Carol Buhanda B U J A N D A. And I apologize for mispronouncing your name. It's Buhanda. Right. All right. What? Uh, a lot. What? Okay. Well, I'll try to do better. Uh, what is your relationship to uh, Jennifer Spiller? I'm her mother. And I'm also the grandmother to Isabel and Chloe. All right. Uh, so uh, uh, you've been present for this hearing. You know that the reason is for me to hear about why Mr. Cook hasn't been getting his parenting time. So um, uh, you're not the grandmother who was present on September 25th, correct? I was there at Jennifer's house, but I'm not the grandmother that was driving. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, but you were present at Jennifer's house that day? Yes, I've been there every time he's come. Oh, okay. Well, let's, as long as we're talking about September 25th, I want you to tell me what you observed that day. Uh, you had... Um, made a ruling on that Thursday that he was to get his parenting time, I think like eight weekends in a row or something like that. Um, the girls didn't want to go and um, Jennifer asked me to please come over. She said, I'm extremely stressed and worried. Could you just come over and keep us calm? I came over and uh, he came up in the car, I was outside and he came up in the car with his mom. I didn't realize they were behind me. I was taking pictures and um, I said, hello. And he said, uh, hello. I said, I didn't see you there. And then I went in to tell the girls that he was there. Uh, Isabel came out with food and water, put it in the back of her grandma's car, came back out with a bag of clothes, put them inside the car went back in to get Chloe and she was gone quite a while. And then she came back out carrying Chloe, which I thought was strange because she's eight years old and her legs are so long. She got her in, buckled in the car and um, Jennifer asked, does she have a car seat? Um, and uh, I believe it was Lois and uh, Carl both said yes. So she put her in the car seat and um, there was, oh, Jennifer asked from the porch, are you going to wear a mask? Because both girls had their mask on. And I don't know who she was talking to, whether it was the grandma or the dad. Um, and uh, he yelled back at her something about, yeah, smarty pants inside my house too. Well, then um, they started to take off and he turned around and started screaming at Isabel and you could hear him. They went down the street to turn around because it's a dead end street and you could hear him all the way down the street in the other driveway. And then coming back, you could hear him all the way down to the corner, which is about eight or nine houses away. And um, later, uh, I understood. You, let, me, let, me, let me stop you. Let me stop you. Could you hear what he was saying? No, not really. Um, just loud. It was just loud and angry. I couldn't tell what it was, what he was saying, but he was definitely. You mentioned, you, you mentioned a name. I think it was Lois. Is that his mother's name? 
yes, yes. And you're acquainted I, with her? I'm sorry? Are you acquainted with her? You know who she oh, is? Yeah, I know who Lois is, yes. Okay. Uh, so is that the sum total of what you observed on that day? No, no. What What else did you observe? Uh, they, the girls came back uh, with their grandmother. Um, they got uh, out of the car. Their mom went down the steps um, by the porch. And Isabel came running up to her mom and just cried hysterically. Jennifer started crying hysterically. And then Chloe ran up and she was crying hysterically. And, a, and a, Lois was unloading the stuff from the back of the car and Jennifer went over to Lois and Lois said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, and um, All right, I, I need to stop you there because that's secondhand information. I can't oh. really consider hearsay. Okay. You could hear it from the porch. It, it's not a question of whether she heard it. The oh, issue okay. is one of the rules of evidence. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, anything else you remember from that day that is not something that someone else said? Uh, yes. Um, it was... Uh, Jennifer felt she needed to call the police and they came and he came up on the porch and the girls were there. She was there. I was there. And he said, there's really nothing I can do because this is civil. Um, you have to get a hold of Child Protective Services. And they talked some more, but we, but me and the girls went inside. Okay. Uh, uh, Ms. Barr, was there any other testimony you wanted to offer through your mother? Um, as far as things that she has seen? As long as, long as they're recent, okay. that she well, saw I, them first I, I don't want to hear about things six years ago. I want to hear about things within the past uh, year at the at, uh, if she has personally witnessed something, she can certainly testify to that. Um, um, okay, so I called my mom every Friday to come back here. Uh, next week, he showed up with someone we have no uh, already, idea. Hold, hold on, hold on. I'm just going to ask her. Uh, okay. I don't want to hear your testimony. Okay. I'll hear yours later. Right now, I want to hear your mother's testimony. So... Uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Buhanda, are there other times that you've been present to observe interactions between Mr. Cook and uh, his girls or interactions between Mr. Cook and his spar when he's been there to get the girls? Yes, I was there every time, uh, usually on the porch. Um, and so... Uh, Isabel had decided the next week, she said, I'm just going to go out. She told me this. I'm just going to go out and tell my dad nicely that we don't want to go and try to explain to him why I don't, we don't want to go and I don't want to let Chloe All go. All right. I, I, I already heard from her. I want to hear what you observed, okay. not what Chloe, not what Chloe or uh, Isabel said. Okay, I understand. Uh, Isabel went to the car. Uh, he was parked um, on the street, and she was on the sidewalk, and there's a parkway between, the, uh, like a buffer. And she was talking to her dad, and he started getting upset and she tried to keep talking to him and he would talk over the top of her, get louder and louder. And then uh, she would get um, upset. And uh, he, uh, as she started to walk away, he said, go on and cry, little girl. So um, every single time it's been a repeat of that 
she would go to the car, she would tell him they're not going, he would get angry and yell at her. Not the whole time. Sometimes he'd say, well, why aren't you coming? You came when my dad was alive. Why aren't you coming? And um, it was extremely stressful. I know on myself, I can't imagine them. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, that covers the important things that you saw. Is that right? Yes. 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 Uh, Mr. Cook, I'm, I'm going to unmute you to see if there are any other questions you want to ask or not for you to testify. That'll come later. Okay. No questions, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Uhanda. You're uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Spar, uh, yeah. who would you like who would you like me to hear from next? Um, tell Gabriel. I just I, my older daughter, she just wanted to say some things um, as far as Carl is concerned, things that she has witnessed over the years and things that she the girls have told so I'll let her. I can't. She, 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 hold on. She can't testify to things the girls told her. That's hearsay. Okay. Um, uh, and if, if she hasn't had any contact with Mr. Cook in the last year, uh, the testimony wouldn't be particularly valuable to me. Okay. Uh, has, has she heard things from him or observed him in the last year? Do you know? I would just like to explain how evil of a person he is. I feel like no one has really just right out and said how evil he well, is. Hold, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. 